Here we are, Keb Darge, special guest on Namantega Radio. It's my first time in Brazil, and I like it. I like San Paulo. You live here, so you like it all the time, but I like it. Now, what I'm going to do today is play some pretty records, and because there's some hippies in the town, I noticed a couple of hippies, I'll play something with a sitar to begin. Here we go.
see me, I do a weekly show in London, and if I don't tell the listeners what the tunes are, I get complaints. So whether you like it or not, I'm going to tell you what the tunes were. The first one was Mouse and the Traps on the fraternity label called Lie, Beg, Burrow and Steal from 1966. And then that last tune is a brand new recording from just a couple of months ago from my mates, the Sirocco Brothers, featuring Alice Jane called Hoodoo. And it's great to get records like that turning out in 2016. Right, on to some obscure stuff. Here we go. Say you ever had the feeling that nobody loved you.
Tim Adams likes that one, don't you, Tim? Shout from the background. And you want to be a tiger girl, don't you? But you won't, because you're a man. I know that. Now, I better explain. I was known worldwide as the king of funk and soul for 20 years, because I was a digger that found lots of records that nobody knew. But, man, you go through them all, you hear them all, you play them all for 20 years, five times a week, you get a bit fed up. So I've moved into this stuff. And there's lots of new discoveries from the 60s, which isn't funk and soul, it's garage. But for me, it's exciting, and that's what I'm going to play. And as luck would have it, my mother just phoned the station, which is quite strange because she died a year ago, and says, Keb, stop playing all that soft pish. Can you play something harder? And I thought, Mum, you want hard stuff? Fair enough. Here's some hard stuff for you. <laughs> Can't expect to get what I have now I can only give you love until the sun goes down And until the leaves of summer turn to shades of brown Cause I tried and I tried But baby, you know that I can only give you everything can I get you to understand? Cause after all, I am just a man You are all my memory stars appear and shadows fall And when every little flower grows a bluebird's call Cause I tried, and I tried but baby, you know that I can only give you everything. Cause I don't want to know this life without you Oh, don't ever more leave me in this world alone I feel like a little child if I was on my own Cause I try, and I try But baby, you know that I can only give you everything
motherfucker. What a fucking tune. That was Keith Kessler, Don't Crowd Me. Magnificent stuff. And if you don't like that, you're a fucking tasteless wanker. And before that, it was Little Boy Blues. I can give you, I can give you everything. Uh, now, Tim wants to hear some titty shakers. Titty shakers? Yeah? yeah. Titty shakers is a new sort of scene in London now. And it's sort of instrumentals and the girls in the clubs. Titty shake. I can't show you because you're not looking, but they sort of do 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 and the breasts wobble, which is very pleasing for an old man like me when you're yeah. DJing, looking at 200 fucking sets of breasts wobbling. I have to seek pleasure where I can at my age. This <laughs> is the king of titty shakers. Here you go. <laughs> go, that's the king of titty shaker records and it sells for stupid money now. It's actually Bobby Fuller of the Bobby Fuller 4 fame who wrote I Fought the Law, blah, blah, blah. But that was the shindigs. The tune was originally, <coughs> excuse me, I'm drunk so I'm burping, originally done by Bob Taylor called Thunder and then uh, he split up with uh, Bobby Fuller and Bobby Fuller re-recorded it and that version's better. Now, I used to be a Northern Soul DJ and I love the Northern Soul scene and all the excitement of it but I don't play them now because I've I've heard them all a thousand times, but I did find some garage recently that sounds a bit like Northern Soul. See what you think. <laughs> Baby, to see what I can do. All the things 
are getting so much higher My soul is burning inside ya That flame is turning to a fire Just like the change in the tide good. The first one there was the Squires on the Atco label, and as luck would have it, about a month ago, the head of Atlantic Records phoned me up and says, Keb, I've been one of your biggest fans for 20 years. Do you want to do a compilation with Atlantic? You can get into our vaults. And I'm like, aye, all right then, pal. So, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, and he's been chasing me like, Keb, come on, uh, when are you coming to New York? I said, oh, wait a minute, pal. So, I'm getting into Atlantic Records to do a compilation, and I'm going to do one with all the Northern Soul stuff and whatever garage I can find. And that's on Atco, which is an Atlantic subsidiary. And then the Clydes, uh, going to put you down, was the one we just finished with. And in actual honesty, I heard it on YouTube, and I couldn't find it. I went around all the record dealers in the world that I know, and I know a lot, 
I want this fucking record. Give me the fucking record. I'll pay you thousand dollars, thousand dollars. Give me the fucking records. Couldn't find it. So eventually, I got onto YouTube, traced the guy that fucking posted it, and says, "Pal, do you want to sell the fucking record?" He was in Spain, in Barcelona. I was like, "How much? Thousand dollars? Aye, all right then. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there you go." Anyway, we've had some complaints again. They're like, "Keb, can you stop playing all this garage pish?" They'll get it one day, and that. You know, and they don't want, the, like, we don't want Funk and Soul, Kev. Can you play some Rockabilly? You played Rockabilly for 10 years. Can you play some Rockabilly? So, all right then. But uh, I got fed up with the Rockabilly classics, so I'm going to play some recent release Rockabilly. This is from Spain, as we mentioned, and all that. And this is a recent band, Charlie High, Tone and the Rockets. See what you think.
Back to the band we started off with. That was the Sirocco Brothers again, which are actually just two people that made all that. They re-recorded, or dubbed, whatever you call it, over-record, over-record, the bass, drums, vocals, blah, 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 blah. Paul Sheenan, magnificent stuff. Now, I've done interviews before I came here, and I've uh, done interviews for 100 years, and they're always like, ooh, Kev, what's your rarest record? What's your rarest record? I'm like, fuck off. It doesn't even matter, you know? It's just, they're all good. Uh, some of them are here, some of them aren't there. However... To satisfy that need, the next one is my rarest record. Ooh, how much did you pay? I paid $2,333 for this next record. And fucking listen to it. It's, ooh. Oh, here we go. Uh, Or you could listen to the latest Kanye West or Justin Bieber record, you fucking numpties. What's wrong with the world? Here we go again. <laughs> With no round here You know I love her and I really care But I don't know how she feels about me Oh, can she love her now? Can it be? Can it be? Oh, can it be? That she loves me I try to please her every way that I can But I don't know if she understands From that I need her and I want her so From that I want her love to build and grow Please, please, please let her be And she loves me Searching, searching 
you go. That was for Marky Linton, who's probably going to listen to this show on Mixcloud or Soundcloud or one of them. See me, Marky. I'm in Brazil. Woohoo, you fucker. Uh, that was The Omens Searching, another sort of rare garage thing. And then before that, the ridiculously expensive Savoy's Can It Be. And I have to explain, I was soul DJ for a long time. I never knew this stuff existed. I got into Rockabilly. I thought, fucking hell, this Rockabilly's good enough. It's as good as the Northern Soul, and the funk's not as good as any of it. It's good, but it's not as good as this stuff. And then I found this garage thing, and I thought, fucking hell, why haven't people played this in clubs before? So one of the reasons could be that for a long time in London, at least, it's like, oh, it's not black. Oh, I couldn't listen to it. It's not black. It's like, fuck off. It's good. You can't. You know, you know, I've been black music champion for 30 years, and you're saying you can't listen to this because it's not black? Fuck off. There you go. So I've now delved into the garage world, and I have found there's thousands of fucking records as good as this that everyone's ignored. There's been collectors. 60 collectors on the planet going wild on this stuff, but no club scene. Is, does that sicken you? Tim, yeah. do you think, why hasn't this fucking hit the world's club scene yet? It's so powerful. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. I'm putting words into your mouth, am I now? Yeah. yeah, good. Right then. So we'll go a bit softer now, but it's still good. These are the brids, not the birds. They were trying to rip the birds off. The brids and your lies. Very good. <laughs>
go. That was the lyrics and so what, which initially came out on the Feather label in California, and then it was nationally released on Era. It's still a bit of money. Unfortunately, I've got the Feather copy. If you get the Era copy, there's a good flip side of it, but I didn't get that one. Anyway, so it's not all rare records. I'm going to play a cheapy cheapy now, and I'm amazed. This is like a $10 record, but it's never been played in clubs. That's got me completely fucked in the head. It's tremendous. Here we go. can never see So I bother trying to turn your back on me Out there you fit so well What's where you cannot tell Your games just don't make sense When you play them at my expense Yeah, when you play them at my expense Just my take years For you to realize It's true, you hear no cries Your games just don't make sense When you play them at my expense Yeah, when you play them at my expense
answer I'll be in on White Whale same label as Dobie Gray used to record he did a couple of Northern Soul things and all that and before that the Cheapo Cheapo record I played was the Nova Local Games and if you want to be a disco jockey and you like this sound get on the internet now get on eBay now because you'll get a copy of the Nova Local Games very cheaply but once the 60s garage sound goes big no you won't you'll pay a lot of money for it so it's not all violent stuff much as I love the violent stuff there's some sophisticated stuff as well like this one. She knows 
Nice man, mod man, and that an obvious American group aiming at the British market because they love the British mods and all that. Before that one, the sophisticated thing I played was State of Mind Move on the Chavis label. And if you're a cheapskate DJ, and I know lots of DJs that are cheapskate DJs, you can get a bootleg of that, which sounds like shit. But if you don't want to do the work to find a real copy that sounds lovely and fresh and crisp, and I won't name any names, uh, there is a bootleg available of that one, so you can be that cheapskate DJ. Now, what's that you say? Punk started in the 70s in the UK with the Sex Pistols and the Ramones and the... Did it? Fuck. It started in America in 1966. Have a listen to this. This is 1966 America. Now...
yo sabe. There you go, two records in a row there to prove that punk started in the 60s, not the fucking 70s. The first teen was the Headstones' Bad Day Blues, and then that one was We the People, My Brother the Man, which also proves that Whoop Whoop was introduced before disco. Aye, ten good years before. Now, unfortunately, a wee while ago, Lemmy died. You like Lemmy? Yeah. Motorhead, aye? Do you like Lemmy? You do? You're not just saying that because he's famous and that. You do like him. I liked him because his lumps on his face were bigger than the lumps on my face. I've got a few small lumps and he'd great big fuckers. And I thought, yeah, you're, you're uglier than me, Lemmy. That's all right. Well, and the what? Hot wind. Hot wind. Yeah. All right, then. Good stuff. So this next record is the best record that Lemmy never made. <laughs> on that. But tell me after, does this sound like Lemmy? I think it does. Again, 66. These are the Sonics. And it's almost Lemmy. Sounds like Lemmy, doesn't it? But it's not. That is probably the most famous 60s garage punk band of all time. That's the Sonics. And we are, oh, is anyone here saying, oh, the Sonics, I know them. He's fucking pretending, the lying bastard. Anyway, oh, that's enough violent, nasty stuff. I do love the violent, nasty stuff, but I'll play a couple of sweet ones. And this is my wife's favourite, Little Edith. And when I got this, she said, honey, can I have that? And I said, no, you can fuck right off. It's mine. And here we go. <laughs> Listen down, I'm a leaving you, and that's all she wrote. That's all she, wrote. she didn't write no more. That's all she, wrote. she let the blues out of night.
just couldn't realize This was happening to me Yeah, and that's all she wrote garage sounds. The first one, the one that my wife wants, was uh, The Hysterics, that's all she wrote, which also came out as The Lovins, but it's still quite a rare record, even though it came out twice. And then there was The Escapades, I Tell No Lies. No doubt he does. Couple more violent garage records, then I'll change the style by request. I've had a request already. Great. <laughs>
and ready to live my life just for you. Can never leave those pretty eyes. someone leaving the studio so I was distracted brutally the first one there was the quest I'm tempted on the Fenton label and any nerds out there that might be interested the Fenton label was set up in Detroit uh, in the Michigan area and it was a label where you could go in with $200 record your record and that label would press your record for you and take your money and there's about 40 bands went there gave their money, got their records pressed, 200 copies, and never gave them to the radio stations or the shops, so they all failed miserably. But there's some great stuff for the Fenton label. And then that was Red Light, just after that, by the Sands of Time, which I was told two years ago, oh, you'll never get a copy of that, Kib. There's only five copies known in the world. You'll never get that one. Nee, 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 I got one. And the man that's leaving, just before he left, said, uh, can you play some titty shakers? So I picked out two of the best titty shakers, and he's going to fucking leave. How rude. How rude can a man be that turns my fucking stomach? Here we go. <laughs>
City shaker interlude there. The first one was the Roadrunners Quasimodo, which you can get quite easy. It pops up on eBay every now and again. But the next one was the Rebel Rousers Peter Gunn Twist, which is a version of Dwayne Eddy's Peter Gunn, of which I have about 20 different versions. I've got a Filipino version of Peter Gunn, which is pretty good to know. Filipinos in the 60s, hard stuff. Anyway, Keb Dodge, that was me. I have been Keb Dodge for a wee while, 59 years now. And all that, and I always will be kept dodge, even after I'm dead. And I'm going to go bye bye because the people behind me say, Kib, you got to go home and uh, we're going to eat, and then you're going to have a sleep and a shower because you smell. And I'm like, Do I? Yeah, you do. All right. We're playing at Taco Bells tonight. We better say that one. We're playing at Taco Bells tonight, but this radio station is going to go out after we've played at Taco Bells, so it's pointless. So you're talking shite. Aren't you? You're just talking shite. So I'm finishing with this one, and if you're listening on Mitch Cloud or SoundCloud, what I'd like you to do is go back and listen to this record five times, because then you'll be hooked. And I must admit, when I first heard it, some guy was trying to sell me for a lot of money. I thought, yeah, it's all right. And then the second time, oh, actually, it's quite good. Third time, oh, fucking hell, it is good. About the fifth time, I was like, fuck me, I must have that record. So I did buy it. And most of my mates that have played it too have had the same reaction. Five times, they're like, fucking hell, go get that record. So I'm finished with this. Uh, Bye-bye, Sao Paulo. It's been very nice talking shite to you and playing some records, and I hope you like it. Cheerio-bye. These are the plagues, and I've been through it before, again, on that Fenton label. (laughs) Cheerio-bye. You expected me to Believe every word you said But now those words are dead You told me all that Real life I've been through it before Today I couldn't try to say I love you And you know Bye.